Christian Church. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he grabbed us and he had us move all the way to the front row. Amen. And, uh, and I, I really feel like that's what's happening in the spirit. You know, God is moving people forward. And, and, and because time is limited. Amen. Time is limited. Amen. And see, look, look behind you real quick. Look behind you real quick. See that? See, God knows what's happening. Amen. How many know folks need some elbow room? Amen. But how can they sit in the back if you're taking up the spot? See, I didn't know that was going to happen, but how many know God did? Amen. Amen. I'm not a prophet, but sometimes I prophesy. Amen. Amen. God is good. But I'd like to greet everyone and welcome everyone to Strongsville Christian Church. Today's message is compared to eternity. Amen. How many of you know that there, this is a mindset that everything we go through in life, we have to compare it to eternity? How many of you know the devil wants us to do the opposite? He wants us to, to make us focus on our problems, on our weaknesses, on our struggles, on uh, the challenges that we go through, on the, the hardships that our family goes through. He wants us to focus on these temporal problems, and he wants us to make, make us feel that our problems are eternal. Eternal. But how many you know none of our problems are eternal? Amen. I'm going to give you some fresh perspective in the Word of God. Amen. We got one of our old members from old Brooklyn come all the way. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Wave your hand so folks can see. He used to be at our old church. Amen. Amen. I've, I've been wanting to, wanting to see you. I'm so glad. Amen. God's going to start sending them. Amen. From the highways and the byways. Because we live in a time right now where people need a word of God. They don't need the fake. They don't need the phony. They don't need religion. They don't need oppression. How many know that's the devil's job? Amen. My job is not to oppress folks. It's to uh, give the word of God and let the word of God release a freedom. Amen. And which is to declare the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Compared to eternity. Amen. The definition of eternity is infinite time, the state after death, immeasurable time. Amen. And do you know, I want you to just take a couple seconds and try to retain in your mind, what does it mean to live a hundred years? Right? Try to retain that in your mind. What does it mean to be on this earth a hundred years. What does that feel like? Do you know? Do you have any clue what it feels like to watch a hundred years go by? To watch all the technology change? Everything that happens, people are born, people die. What happens after a hundred years? Okay, I want to challenge you. Now in your mind, try to understand what it feels like to live like in the, uh, they, they say old as Methuselah, right? You ever heard that? Old as Methuselah. They say he was one of the oldest folks in the Bible, right? Living nine, 900 plus years. Imagine what it feels like to live 900 years. Now, 900 years is actually not even able to compare to 10,000 years or a billion years. Or a trillion years. Can you even contain in your mind, as smart as you folks are, with all your degrees and all your wisdom and all your understanding, can you contain in your mind what it is to be a trillion years old? And even consider this, that a trillion years is actually nothing. A trillion years is nothing compared to eternity. Eternity, this is what we're going to talk about compared to eternity. Hope restricted to this temporal life creates a bipolar roller coaster attitude. You see, the world right now, if you, if you go around in, in the world in a workplace, if you go out to the grocery store, if you know some family members that are not saved, they're not born again, they don't have the Holy Spirit. If you just look at and watch the way that they, they react, they're like a roller coaster. You know, at, when everything in their life is going good, they're high, right? When the gas prices are right, they're on cloud nine. When the gas prices go down, they're defeated, 
right? When, they're, when their marriage is going good, they're on cloud nine. When the marriage is going bad, they're, they're defeated. You know, they're just, this is how the world is. A bipolar attitude. Why? Because their focus is not on eternity, their focus is on this temporal life. And when you are focused on this temporal life, you're going to be a wreck. That's what it means to be bipolar. Bipolar means for one moment, you're extremely, you're overwhelmed with joy. The next moment when, when you're walking by sight, and not by faith, the next moment when something doesn't go your way or something doesn't happen the way you want, now you're going into deep depression and you're, you're frustrated and you're aggravated. You lose your peace. Imagine just always living life like that. You see, and that's how the devil wants us to be. And we're all, he wants folks to be all over the church, all over the place. And sometimes even the Christians... Even the ones that are saved can have a bipolar attitude when they take their focus off of eternity. Hope restricted to this temporal life creates a bipolar roller coaster attitude. In 1 Corinthians 15, 19, it says, if in this life only, look at that word only, if in this life only we have hope in Christ. How many of you know that our life is not restricted, our hope is not restricted to this life? I'm not saying we don't have any hope in this life because we do. We have hope in this life, but my hope is not on temporal situations. My hope is not what's happening or not happening in the White House. And praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus. My hope is not in Biden. Amen. My hope is not in Dr. Fucci. My hope is not in the CDC. My hope is not in the mismanagement of politicians. Amen. My hope is not in my family. My hope is not in this life. My hope is in Jesus. And my eternal hope is still not in this life. It's in the next life to come. I want to give you some fresh perspective. Fresh. Not stale. Not stagnant, but fresh perspective. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. How many know some miserable folks? Anyone ever know any miserable folks? They walk around like this. The gas prices and the milk prices and things, everything going up and down. And, and you no know, good. And the crazy people in the White House and the CDC and taking freedom. Right? Huh? Anyone ever heard someone like that? <laughs> How many know we don't have to be like that? Because, folks, here's the thing if you don't have hope in Jesus, you, by default, you're going to be like that. Or if you're struggling with unbelief or you're struggling with faith, you can still be like that. You see, that's why we need to compare to eternity. I'm not saying we should like, you know, start like praise dancing because the gas prices are high. <laughs> But it, I'm not saying you can either. Amen. Job says, should we not receive good and evil from the Lord? I'm not saying you're not allowed to praise God for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Do you know when someone stole my car? When I was super poor. I'm talking about poor, poor. Like ghetto poor. Food stamps poor. No help from family poor. And someone stole my car. Do you know I praise God? And my boss was watching me. He said, why don't you cuss and swear? You're, he said, you're only a human. Which is true, but not totally true. We are all only human. 
That's true, but not totally true. Because what is totally true is we all have a priceless, eternal soul. Do you know they can put a price on your heart? They could put a price on your corneas for corneal transplants when there's cadavers and they have a certain amount of time before the body goes into corruption. If they remove them quick enough, they could put those corneas on another soul for a price, if the price is right. But you know, they can't put a price on your soul. For what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? I want to talk to you today about compared to eternity. What is it that we are focused on? And what does it mean compared to eternity? How many of you know God, it's not God's will that any should perish? You know that? It's not God's will that any should perish. All have a right to the tree of life. My pastor used to say this one thing. He says, why does God hate sin? And this is my pastor speaking. I'm just telling you what he used to say. Why does God hate sin? And he said, because sin makes you think that God doesn't love you. You see that? When we sin, it makes us think that God doesn't love us. But the Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He proved his love. The Bible says no greater love than a man lay down his life for a friend. And he did that so that we can be set free, so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be delivered because he has a new life for us in Christ. Amen. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 26, 3, it says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusteth thee in thee, and trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Do you see that, folks? How do you get perfect peace? By keeping your mind stayed on the Lord. Who is the Lord? Is the Lord temporal? Is the Lord part-time? Is the Lord a rental God? Well, I just want to rent God for a moment. <laughs> He's eternal. Amen. He knew us before we were born. And if you can, by all of your choices, choose to keep your mind on the Lord, the Bible says, I will keep thee in perfect peace. Amen. Now, for those of that you that know me, you know that when my wife asked me, what do I want for my birthday? You know that I ask her for peace. In other words, don't vex my soul on my birthday. Don't, I don't want anything. You don't have to get me a cake. You don't need to get me candy. You don't need to buy me a car. You don't need to do anything for me. The only thing I ask for is peace. Give me one day of peace because the older I get, the more I want peace. And what I found that it doesn't matter if you are a millionaire, a trillionaire, a gazillionaire, if you don't have peace, nothing on this earth can replace the value of peace. You could be anywhere. You could be in the Bahamas. You could be on a hammock with the ocean and people uh, blowing you with a palm leaf and, and waiting on you hand and foot. But if you don't have peace of mind, if you don't have joy, you won't be able to enjoy anything. You could have a marriage, a good marriage. You could have a good house. You could have a good car, a good job. But if you don't have peace, life is miserable. And it's so funny because Jesus said, peace I leave with you, but not as the world leaves. Because in the world, check this out, folks, you have to pay 
for the things of the world, right? Some folks, they will drink themselves into a stupor because they're not getting peace from God, so they will purchase peace. They will purchase marijuana. They will purchase drugs. They will purchase alcohol to try to get peace from those things, which you can do that, but it costs you. You see, when you get peace from the world, it will give you a temporal peace, but it always takes from you. There is nothing in this world that will give you something without taking more than what it gives you. So I'm not saying you, the Bible says sin has pleasure, which is a pseudo peace, a fake peace, a form of peace. The this, this sin has pleasure for a season. You see, God doesn't have peace for just a season. His peace is eternal. And if you can keep your mind focused on the Lord, you won't need the cheap, watered down, diluted peace that the world has to give you. Because you, you could do drugs, you could drink, you could take all the medication at the expense of your liver. You see that? At the expense, you could smoke all, you could get, I smoke weed. Man, I, was, I, I knew how to smoke weed, folks. I was like Chi Chi Chong. <laughs> Roll them if you got them. I know that weed can give you a form of peace, but at what expense? I, I'm telling you, if you could have met the former me when I was smoking weed, I was brain dead. <laughs> I was so brain dead because, and, and, and I wanted peace. That's why I kept smoking weed. I wanted, I wanted an escape from reality. All the pains and the stresses and the failures and the hurts and the wounds and the despairs and the woe is me. I, I, I had to escape it. I couldn't take it anymore. So I was reaching out to wherever I knew and I would reach out to all the things that the world would have to offer. And it was a crutch but not a cure. And at the expense of my brain cells, so if you come to church here and you see Pastor Kalini every once in a while misspells a word, chalk that up to all the ganja. <laughs> chalk it up to all the acid I used to do. I'm not saying God didn't heal me, but sometimes it's a flashback here and there, you know. <laughs> Watch out. When we view every situation from the lens of eternity, it minimizes even the greatest attack. You see, I'm wearing glasses right now. Why? Because if I take my glasses off, you guys don't, you guys all look the same. You just look like blurry. Like if your hair is a wreck, I, I can't see it. Right? You guys just look blurry, a blur, right? But if I put my prescription, my lens, now I can see your hair really is messed up. <laughs> Get it together, amen. <laughs> How many of you know we need to put the lens on eternity? I want you, I, I want to cause you a little bit of pain and then a little bit of perspective and a little bit of healing. Amen. I want you to take a couple seconds and in your own mind, you think, what was the, I know for me what it was. What was it for you that was, that caused you the most amount of pain? What, what happened to you? I don't care if it was when you were a child and, and you were victimized when you were married, you went through divorce. When you were married, you went through fighting, domestic violence. Whether you, it, it, I don't know what it is. When you were a kid, you got bullied. What is it? What, you, what, what, was there one event that happened that really affected how you act? What is it in your life that caused you the most amount of pain? Was it abandonment? Was it disrespect? Was it abuse? What, what, what was it? Was it something that you made a mistake and you regret? And if you could have took it back, you would have done it differently. Because sometimes the thing that caused the most pain is because we made the wrong choice. We made the wrong choice. We brought pain on ourselves. Then there's other times 
There's other times that we didn't make the wrong choice. We were doing the right thing. We were legitimate victims. Either way, it doesn't matter. The point is this. You think about what it was that happened to you. Maybe a family member died. Maybe you lost a child. What was it that caused you the most amount of pain, right? And now you think of how much it affects you, but add, add one year. How did you feel one year after it happened? Were you still affected, but maybe just a little bit not as much? Now add 10 years to that thing that hurts you so much. Now you add 10 years to it, and now you still remember it, but you know, now you got new pains that accumulated, and it, you're kind of, you're still aware of it, but it's not as painful because 10 years went by. Now add 50 years. Now it's like you can't even remember what happened. I don't know what happened, Sonny Boy. I remember I was uh, something, someone, something happened somewhere. Oh, where's my dentures? And check my, the pens are okay. <laughs> you see, think about that. And this is life. You add 50 years to the most painful thing. Now the thing that controlled your entire life, you add 50 years to it. You might not even remember what happened. Do you understand? Now add 100 years, add 1,000 years, add eternity to the most catastrophic eternity. And now it just disappears. And it fades into nothing. And this is what God is trying to tell the church. Whatever it is that has affected you, what value does it have compared to eternity? Compared to what you will spend your eternal soul. And it takes the greatest attack and it minimizes it to just about Nothing. Because I remember when I first got saved, I got saved because I was enduring the most painful situation in my life. I was looking at a place of hopelessness. I was in a place where I no longer wanted to live. I was in so much pain and suffering that I no longer cared about this life. And then it was in that moment that God showed me that he was real. And when I realized that he was real, even my most painful thing that I ever went to, it caused me to change lenses and think of the reality of eternity. And when I saw how big our eternal God is, it made my greatest situation seem like a speck of dust. I want to talk to you today about compared to eternity. Come on, you married folks. How many of you guys are married? Huh? How many ever had a, a, a haymaker argument with your beloved? Raise your hand. Haymaker. Ah! Right? Everything's so dramatic. Ah! The world's coming to an end. And the next day, poor Rhonda. Amen. You she got one defender. Amen. Amen. Think about that. You got a haymaker argument, right? And then the next day, you guys cuddle, you kiss and make up. It was like it never even mattered. You ever think about compared to eternity, what is it that we make such a big deal over? That in the big scale, and folks, I see we got some mature folks in here, amen? And I'm going to call you mature. I don't call you old. I call you mature. You've been around the block. And you mature folks, now listen, you mature folks, you know this. You know that the older you get, life just is like this. Months are flying by. Years are flying by. Your little grandbabies, before you know it, they're already graduated college. You're like, what happened? Why? Because life is just a blimp. This life that we got, it's so short. And sometimes until we are surrounded by death, we can forget that. 
And it's it, the Bible says this. It's weird how the Bible depicts this in the Proverbs. It says better is the house of mourning than in the house of laughter. Why? What, who wants to, Who doesn't want to laugh? I like to laugh. Right. Why is better in the house of mourning better than in a house of laughter? Because God is trying to teach us something that compared to eternity, nothing is greater than eternity. And sometimes we have a temporal laughter. But in uh, in the house of mourning, it changes your focus off to this temporal life and it puts us back on eternal perspective. Because there are some folks that are running from God and they think life is all about uh, having a good time, having a fun, living in the moment, have joy, do whatever you want, right? Smoke them if you got them, do what you want, right? Do, how, live however you want. And they're just caught up in the moment and they're just thinking about whatever makes them feel good, whatever makes them laugh, whatever, do whatever they do. What, that's what Satanism, do without will. Right. And they're only caught up into that moment, not realizing that there is eternity right around the corner. And if we knew that what we do will affect people around us, it affects eternal souls. I'll tell you, if we could compare things to eternity, do you think it will change our choices? If we can compare things to eternity, will it affect our choices? See, a lot of times the thief on the cross, there were there was a thief, two thieves on the cross. But their whole life was going by like this. But if one had unbelief, the other one had belief. The one with belief said, Master, will you remember me? Will you remember me in your kingdom? Will you remember me? And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, you'll be with me in paradise. Compared to eternity. Think about that. Dying on the cross next to Jesus. Think of the pain. Think of the temporal situation. You can't possibly go any lower in life than to be naked, bleeding out, suffering and agony on the cross. Life can't get any worse. I guarantee the thief on the cross wasn't like, well, the cost of donkeys went up. <laughs> Potiphar ain't right. Caesar, man, that, 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 that dinero ain't what it used to be. Can't even buy eggs. You see that when you're on the cross and you're breathing your last life, you're not thinking about these things that stress us out. Compared to eternity, what does it really matter? Amen. See, the devil will try to get you to be ignorant to eternity. Amen. And God's saying compared to eternity, what does it matter? Huh? When we view every situation from the lens of eternity, it minimizes even the greatest attack. In other words, when the devil's hitting you with everything he's got, you can sit back and say, I'm still saved. Amen. Amen. I'm still saved. I see you, devil. Huh? You can look at the devil and say, I see you. Uh -huh. Right? Some of you guys got discernment. You know it's the devil. You know it's the demons. You know it's spirits. You know it's the antichrist on the move. You know it's the mark of the beast setting up platform. You know what's happening. You're not ignorant. You're not deceived of Satan's devices. You can see him a mile away. And as he hits you with his biggest blow, you can sit back in your reclining chair, your lazy boy, and say, I'm still saved. Compared to eternity. You see, because those, those that, they might not be under attack. They might be living the dream. Peaches, rainbows, and butterflies. They got so much money, they, they heat their furnace up with a shovel and $100 bills. They're up on their private jet airplane uh, golfing with uh, those protege eggs, those Russian gold eggs, just knocking them off at the poor people, right? <laughs> but if they ain't saved, they don't got no peace. Why is it that there are so many famous people, we know them all, musicians, actors, why is it? 
Why is it with all that money, with all that success, with all that reputation, all that fame, all that fortune, they have everything. We would cut our right leg off to, to get what they got. Why is it they have it already and they take out their own life? Because compared to eternity, these things in this life can't satisfy us. There is a peace and joy that comes from having a relationship with Jesus Christ that is irreplaceable. And Job 1.19, it says, and, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. Can you imagine that? You get the report that your whole entire family died. That's horrible. It's bad enough that one of your loved ones dies. And I am the only one escaped alone to tell thee. And then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head like me and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Isn't that interesting? His first reaction after getting a report of his entire family dying. He could have called out to the doctor he could have went to the pub. He could have went to the bar. I'm sure they had some type of uh, fermented wine back then because his sons was dipping in it. <laughs> that could have been his first reaction. And who would have judged him if it was? His first reaction upon receiving the worst report was he went to the Lord. You know what I found? Is that when life gets hard, folks will start to run to church. Why do people run to church when life gets hard? Because they know that this life is failing them. Their family sometimes fails them. They fail themselves sometimes. Their employers, their job, their bank account fails them. PlayStation, Xbox, video games. If you don't have no peace and joy, you can play all the video games you want and it will fail you. Your brand new car will fail you. You're all these things. When, when pain gets, when life gets tough, the house of God will flood. They said during the 911 towers attack, when the towers came down, they said it was the highest church attendance. Why? Because compared to eternity, this life could not comfort them. They needed a word of God. They needed a new perspective. They needed a touch from the Lord. They needed a touch from the Holy Spirit. They needed a peace that comes from the anointing of God. They needed a joy to press through. They needed strength from the arm of God. They needed a, a, the Lord to help them. Immediately, they needed to touch Jesus some fresh perspective. But how many of you know we don't have to wait until catastrophe takes place to run to God's house? Amen. I like to run to God's house before it happens. Amen. So I'm already plugged in. <laughs> I like to be close to the pastor so he already knows me. Pastor, pray for me. Before it happens. We don't have to wait until all hell breaks loose to introduce ourselves to the house of God. I need a pew that's certified with my name on it. I'm not saying you can't sit in my seat, but I need a seat, amen? I need a place in the house of God compared to eternity. And said, naked I came, and out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Do you see that? After receiving the most heinous report, Job immediately compared it to eternity. 
And why did he immediately compare it to eternity? Because he knew that if he did not take his focus off of the situation that happened, knowing that when he dies, guess what? He dies naked. You know that when you die, you die naked. That means right now we cover up with clothing, and you should. Amen. We're not a nudist colony. Amen. We cover up our imperfections. You know, I lost a little bit of weight, so I'm a little bolder now, but I used to have a belly, amen? I'm not saying I don't now, but I'm saying it was like out there, right? And so I would wear baggier clothes, and black favored me, right? So I wear black baggy clothes, and it covered up. But how many of you know when I die, I don't have that privilege? When I die, I won't be able to cover up my imperfections, the Lord is going to have to receive me with my belly and all, with my moles, with my wrinkles, with my bald head. Amen. My two crooked eyes, my crooked toe that hangs to the right. Amen. I, I'm just playing. I don't have a crooked toe. Amen. <laughs> but I'm just saying when we die, we die naked and, and, as we are. And how many of you know the Lord loves us as we are? And how many of you know when we die, all of our children, guess what? They can't come. And even our spouse, the Bible says that there's no marriage given in heaven. Why? Because the church is the bride of Christ and Jesus is the groomsman. Jesus is the husband for the bride of Christ. In other words, I'm not going to be married to Sister Rhonda. I'm going to be married to Jesus. You see what I'm saying? There is an eternity. What is it compared to eternity? Some folks that are having a, a, a rough marriage, you're like, man, I've been waiting for Jesus to take this person. Man, I don't know how much longer. Come on, Lord. I love him, but man. About time I upgrade. <laughs> I made it through. <laughs> I'm ready to swap. What's that, that, that show they got, Wife Swap? <laughs> but you can't do that down here. That's compared to eternity. Amen? Jesus is going to be our eternal. We're going to be married with him eternity. Amen. Just think about that for a moment. Amen? No matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it is, press on. Be an overcomer. Be steadfast. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Don't look behind. Keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. What is it compared to eternity? I don't care how much you're struggling. I don't care how tempted you are. I don't care how defeated you. you a lot of us, we feel unworthy. Press on. Press on. Compared to eternity, you'll find out that if you keep moving forward on God, things will start to fall off of you. Like a dog sheds its hair. You understand? A dog sheds its hair. And sometimes if that hair stays on that dog too long, it gets knotted up. Sometimes we're like the dogs here. We get knotted up. But you have to keep moving forward. You have to shed. You have to release some things. If you stay in the word of God, if you stay in the house of God, if you stay in the anointing of God, if you stay in the praise of God, the presence of God, and you keep doing what God called you to do, if you could keep serving God, if you could keep following him, you'll find that things will start to drop off of you. It might not all drop off at one, all right away. One knot at a time. Keep pressing towards the mark. Oh, God bless you, Job. What did you say? After all that, did you say you need to call your counselor? Did you say you need to check in with CDC, what they're talking about? What happened? Naked shall I return thither, and the Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all of this, Job sinned not nor he charged God foolishly. How many people right now, they're blaming God for everything. If God was real, why would the babies die? If God is real, why is all this sickness and suffering? If God is real, why would he? They, people are charging God. 
They're accusing him. They're blaming one another. They're fighting because they need to focus back on eternity. And I got to tell you that sometimes we judge a situation before God's done with it. How many of you know what you see right now today? I'm not yet a finished product. The Lord is still molding me. He's still shaping me. We are pottery under the potter's hands. The great artist, the great I am, the ruler of who was, who is, and who is to come. He's putting his hands on us. He's molding us. He's shaping us. He has got an artistic eye. We see there's imperfections. We see that there's little bubbles in the clay. But when God gets done kneading us and smoothing us out, we will be found as pure gold. I want to talk to you today about compared to eternity. And James 1, 2, it says, consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, and whenever you face trials of many kinds, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. What's catastrophic in this life is meaningless in the next life. Remember that, folks. The Bible says that the earth and the fullness thereof will burn up with a fervent heat. Do you know what that means? That compared to eternity, this entire earth, The entire earth, you have all these folks that they're spending all of their energy in trying to preserve the earth. They're trying to talk about global warming and and how to preserve the animals and how to preserve these things. And I'm not saying those things are evil, that we should not be good stewards of this earth. But I'm telling you, the Bible says that the earth and everything thereof will be burned up. Your house, everything, everything that you see will eventually be gone. All of man, this building, this this church, us, our flesh, our bodies, all of it will be gone compared to eternity. You ever heard only what you do for Christ will last? They know them by the love that they have for one another. Ecclesiastes 12, 8, meaningless. This was Solomon. The Bible says that he was one of the wisest man's men on earth. He prayed and God gave him a vision and showed him that he had wisdom so profound that people came from all over the earth to hear him talk. He was so wise and profound. And after that flow of wisdom... After the conclusion of folks working their whole lives and achieving all these goals and all these riches, look at what Solomon said. He said, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. What is he saying? Compared to eternity. My, my aunt, God, my, she was a great aunt of mine. God bless her heart, bless her soul. She's a sweet lady, very sweet lady. She inherited a lot of property from her parents. Her parents uh, owned uh, almost an entire street on Denison in the old neighborhood in Cleveland on Denison, right, on the west side. She, she owned a whole entire storefront building. She owned multiple ho- houses. I think it was uh, 32nd in Denison, something like that. Don't hold me to it. But she owned multiple houses on the uh, street. She owned a big storefront in the front. And in the back, she owned this huge Uh, industrial building. It was actually, she owned a factory. They were big kahunas. Her parents, and her parents died, and this was my great aunt, and her parents died. They spent everything, their whole entire life, blood, sweat, and tears to build up this kingdom. All their effort, they, they were hard workers. They worked so hard. They sacrificed for their family. They did all this effort and and they gave this inheritance to my great aunt. And my great aunt, she developed uh, 
she developed a mental illness. And she ended up in a nursing home. And the lawyers took everything. They stripped her totally clean. But compared to eternity, what does it really mean? What does it really mean compared to eternity? You know, the, for you parents, do you know the best gift you can give your children is knowledge of saving grace and Jesus? That is the best gift. You might not have an industrial building to leave behind. You might not be able to leave them a trillion dollars behind. You might not be able to leave much behind. But I'll tell you what, if you could leave them behind the knowledge of the gospel, if you could pray for their souls compared to eternity, that's the most important thing. 12, 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Corinthians, for out of the affliction, which is but for a moment. Remember that. Whatever it is you're struggling with, it is just for a moment. Always remember that. It's just for a moment. It says it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternity weight of glory. When we know the enemy can't affect our eternity, we have a supernatural boldness. Do you know that the enemy has no power over where you spend eternity? He has no power. And Daniel 3.16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And if he will not deliver us out of thine hand, O king, but if not, be it known unto us, unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods and worship the golden image which thou hast set up. In other words, these folks were so focused on eternity that their even temporal life of going into the fire was not compared to eternity. You see, when you can compare these challenges in life to eternity, you're going to make decisions that please God and not man. They turn the fire up seven times hotter. Strong to be a Christian church. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. few moments later hey this is pastor joseph Collini from strongsville christian church we're here doing a radio slot at 95.5 the fish and we're doing a prayer of salvation for souls to get saved i got uh, my friend back here, the sound engineer, and uh, he's going to play what we got going on for us. This is Pastor Joseph Kalini from Strongsville Christian Church. God forbid, but if you were to leave this earth today, do you know exactly where you would go? I invite you to repeat this prayer and mean it with your whole heart, and you can have that blessed assurance right now. Father God, I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for accepting me in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family of God. Did you know Strongsville Christian Church is a Pentecostal church that honors the Holy Spirit, a church that wins souls, a church that makes no apologies for believing the whole Bible. I personally invite you to join us on Wednesday, 7 p.m., Sunday, 11 a.m. off Pearl Road on Temple Drive in Strongsville, Ohio.